There are 11 pieces of communications hardware which we'll explain within this video, all of which are vital to ensuring computer system hardware is able to communicate with other information systems, either through the internet or another transmission medium such as Bluetooth. The first piece of hardware being examined is known as a hub. Hubs are devices which can connect numerous computers together in a network, thus allowing them to share data packets. Hubs are basic devices, with no packet examining as the hub simply relays data to all other computers within the hub, rather than specific computers which the information may be intended for. The number of ports which a hub contains directly correlates with the number of devices which can be connected. For example, an 8-port hub can connect up to 8 unique computer systems. While hubs are considered as inexpensive communications hardware technology, this is due to numerous pitfalls. One major disadvantage of a hub is that of data security. As all data is sent to all devices connected to the hub, certain computers may receive data which is unintended for them. Due to this wide-scale sharing of data, data collisions are also a considerable factor which must be taken into consideration while operating a hub, as this can lead to errors within data transmission or the matter in which certain devices operate. Thus, due to the aforementioned characteristics of a hub, this piece of communications hardware is most suitable for networks which require simple, low bandwidth communications between computer systems. Switches are extremely similar to hubs in that they relay data packets onto other computer systems connected to the device. However, unlike hubs, switches have the capability of examining which device the data packet is meant for, allowing for directed data communications. This means that a switch rectifies the predominant issue found in hubs and that due to directed network communications capabilities, data security and potential data collisions are not issues within a switch. This added sophistication comes at a cost, however, as switches are considerably more expensive in comparison to hubs, and thus switches' main purpose can be considered as a device which one would use to establish a network of computers in which data security and speed are of the highest priority. Routers transfer data between networks as directed by the user. Through the use of a microcomputer within a router, a router is able to determine the desired destination of data and the accompanying methods which it has to send that data. The router is then able to intelligently pick the most efficient method, namely for identifying the least congested, thus fastest route. The predominant use of a router, both within the workplace and residentially, is that of connecting a computer system or computer network to the internet. Through utilizing a modem, that of which we further explain later, a router is able to transmit data packets towards their desired location, as specified by the user. A modem and router often work hand in hand in order to deliver an internet connection to the end user. A modem's role within a computer system's connection with the internet is that of the modulation and demodulation of data to be transferred. Current wide-scale data transfer relies upon telephone lines to carry data to a device, often a satellite tower, which is able to broadcast the data to a specific location around the world. However, the issue with this system is that computers operate upon digital data that is binary, or zeros and ones, whereas telephone lines are only able to transmit analog signals. Thus, for a router to transmit digital data, it must first convert this data into an analog signal so as it can be sent through telephone lines. This conversion from digital to analog is known as modularization. Similar occurs when a modem receives data which must be sent to a computer system. As the data will have arrived as an analog signal from the telephone system, the modem must convert the data back into a digital signal so as the computer can interpret it. This process is known as demodularization. Bridges allow two similar networks to combine into one greater network using a combination of both hardware and software, as long as both networks utilize the same protocol. By the way, a protocol is simply a set of conditions which ensure data flow between two separate computer systems is able to be performed without issue. As both networks utilize the same protocol, no fancy data conversions must take place for data transfer, as seen with routers or gateways, and thus bridges are often quicker than routers and gateways for local networks. Due to bridges' incapability to perform protocol conversions to tr transmit to networks on different protocols, bridges are often cheaper than a router or gateway. Thus, it can be concluded that the predominant use case of a bridge is when users require that computer systems on different networks, however which still utilize the same protocol, be able to communicate quickly on one larger network. The gateway is extremely similar to a bridge in that it is able to join two different networks together into one larger local area network, or LAN for short. However, what is unique about a gateway is that it has the capability to join two networks which utilize differing protocols, something which a bridge is unable to accomplish. Similar to a bridge also, a gateway is simply a combination of both hardware and software. There are numerous different internet protocols which may be used by a network, and thus it is often that a business must invest in a gateway if they desire to merge two separate networks. Thus, it can be concluded that the predominant use cases for gateways is for when a user wants to merge two different networks so as that they can have computer systems communicate between one another, 
which also utilize different protocols, as a gateway is able to convert numerous different protocols as to ensure a stable connection between systems. Network interface cards allow a computer system to transmit data, either wirelessly or through a cable, towards a network. Network interface cards provide a media access control address, or MAC address for short, to a computer system. MAC addresses are vital to a computer system's ability to communicate with a network, as it allows the computer to be individually identified, so as data is able to be sent to it specifically, and that other devices understand which device they are receiving data from. Think about this as an example. Say you want to Google communications hardware. When the computer system sends this request to Google, Google must understand who to send the request back to, so as they can send the intended information towards you. A MAC address would allow Google in this situation to understand that you were the person who asked for information surrounding communications hardware, and thus return the data to your computer system specifically. A network interface card is required for a device to communicate with a network as it provides the device with an identifier so as other systems can direct data accordingly. Mobile phones are portable devices which predominantly allow users to communicate with one another in a wide variety of environments. However, more recently have begun to allow users access to more features. The basic communications of a mobile phone can be performed in a variety of methods. However, the most prominent and basic methods are either telephone calls or text messaging, often through the short message service, or SMS for short. To accomplish this, mobile phones contain complicated antenna arrays in order to wirelessly interact with the telephone service, whether to place calls or utilize SMS. Mobile phones are now also able to access the internet, once again through wirelessly communicating with telephone lines and satellite towers in order to deliver an internet connection to the end user. Inbuilt cameras are an additional common feature within modern mobile phones, allowing the user access to a portable camera wherever they are. It is due to these features, and more, such as radio, music, and video capabilities, that modern mobile phones are often classified as multifunctional devices in today's, in today's modern, ultra-connected society. It is often compulsory that every person has a mobile phone so they can be contacted when emergencies occur, whether personal or within a business. Cables are vital components to many communication systems, as they allow the transfer of data between devices, whether on a small scale, such as within, within a PC, or on a larger scale, such as a local area network. There are various types of cables, all of which contain differing properties and thus make them most appropriate for specific situations. Copper cables, for example, are most appropriate for TV connections, as they are able to sustain high enough bandwidth for a stable video connection from antenna to television. Copper cables are relatively affordable compared to competing options. However, this is due to their lower bandwidth compared to competing cable types, such as a twisted pair cable. A twisted pair cable maintains a higher bandwidth over long di longer distance by making use of eight cables twisted around each other to maintain signal integrity. These cables, while able to sustain a higher bandwidth over a longer distance, are considerably more expensive compared to their copper counterparts. For even higher bandwidth and distance potential, fiber optic cables can be used. Fiber optic cables reflect light down a cable in order to send data through the cable. This means that unlike copper or twisted pair cables, it is not prone to electrical interference. Once again, however, the main downsides of fiber optic cables are their cost, where they are considerably more expensive than the next closest competitor, twisted pair, and significantly more expensive than the cheaper copper standard. However, if a large bandwidth is required, this may be a worthwhile Wireless investment. access points provide a wireless connection towards compatible computer systems within the access points radius. For computer systems to be compatible, they must contain a wireless network interface card, which was discussed earlier within this video. Wireless access points utilize radio waves to broadcast and receive data from computer systems. Often, these must be within dedicated channels to increase stability, range, and bandwidth. There are, however, downsides to wireless access points, as they are often slower than wired alternatives, and if a weak password is implemented, unauthorized devices may gain access to the network. Wireless access points are extremely common around modern day society, appearing wherever a Wi-Fi network is available, such as a school, most workplaces, most homes, and many cafes and fast food locations. Bluetooth is a short range wireless communications protocol. Bluetooth requires extremely low amounts of power, even less so with specific Bluetooth standards, such as Bluetooth Low Energy, making them ideal for devices with limited battery life, such as mobile phones or Internet of Things devices. Additionally, the protocol does not experience interference from other devices on the same protocol, ensuring that the standard works in both quiet and popular environments equally well. There are, however, several downsides to the Bluetooth communications protocol, specifically that it is extremely low range, with newer standards such as Bluetooth 4.0 only achieving a maximum 60 meter radius, and that is assuming no materials such as walls or humans are between both devices. That also is the second main disadvantage of the protocol, 
as human bodies and specific types of walls and other materials are able to strongly impede a Bluetooth device's connection.